As a young boy, my educated dad encouraged me to find a safe job. My rich dad, on the other hand, encouraged me to begin acquiring assets that I loved. If you don't love it, you won't take care of it. I collect real estate simply because I love buildings and land. I love shopping for them. I could look at them all day long. When problems arise, the problems are not so bad that it changes my love for real estate. For people who hate real estate, they shouldn't buy it. I love stocks of small companies, especially startups. The reason is that I am an entrepreneur, not a corporate person. In my early years, I worked in large organizations such as Standard Oil of California, the U.S. Marine Corps, and Xerox Corporation. I enjoyed my time with those organizations and have fond memories, but I know deep down I'm not a company man. I like starting companies, not running them. So my stock buys are usually of small companies, and sometimes I even start the company and take it public. Fortunes are made in new stock issues, and I love the game. Many people are afraid of small cap companies and call them risky, and they are. But risk is always diminished if you love what the investment is, understand it, and know the game. For years, even while I was with the Marine Corps and Xerox, I did what my rich dad recommended. I kept my daytime job, but I still minded my own business. I was active in my asset column. I traded real estate and small stocks. Rich Dad always stressed the importance of financial literacy. The better I was at understanding the accounting and cash management, the better I would be at analyzing investments, and eventually starting and building my own company. I would not encourage anyone to start a company unless they really want to. Knowing what I know about running a company, I would not wish that task on anyone. There are times when people cannot find employment, but where starting a company is a solution for them. The odds are against success. Nine out of ten companies fail in five years. Of those that survive the first five years, nine out of every ten of those eventually fail as well. So only if you really have the desire to own your own company do I recommend it. Otherwise, keep your daytime job and mind your own business. When I say mind your own business, I mean to build and keep your asset column strong. Once a dollar goes into it, never let it come out. Think of it this way. Once a dollar goes into your asset column, it becomes your employee. The best thing about money is that it works 24 hours a day and can work for generations. Keep your daytime job, be a great, hardworking employee, but keep building that asset column. As your cash flow grows, you can buy some luxuries. An important distinction is that rich people buy luxuries last, while the poor and middle class tend to buy luxuries first. The poor and middle class often buy luxury items such as big houses, diamonds, furs, jewelry, or boats because they want to look rich. They look rich, but in reality, they just get deeper in debt on credit. The old money people, the long-term rich, built their asset column first. Then the income generated from the asset column bought their luxuries. The poor and middle class buy luxuries with their own sweat, blood, and children's inheritance. A true luxury is a reward for investing in and developing a real asset. For example, when my wife and I had extra money coming from our apartment houses, she went out and bought her Mercedes. It didn't take any extra work or risk on her part because the apartment house bought the car. She did, however, have to wait for it for four years while the real estate investment portfolio grew and finally began throwing off enough extra cash flow to pay for the car. But the luxury, the Mercedes, was a true reward because she had proved she knew how to grow her asset column. That car now means a lot more to her than simply another pretty car. It means she used her financial intelligence to afford it. What most people do is they impulsively go out and buy a new car or some other luxury on credit. They may feel bored and just want a new toy. Buying a luxury on credit often causes a person to sooner or later 
actually resent that luxury because the debt on the luxury becomes a financial burden. After you've taken the time and invested in and built your own business, you're now ready to add the magic touch, the biggest secret of the rich. The secret that puts the rich way ahead of the pack. The reward at the end of the road for diligently taking the time to mind your own business. 